Welcome to Soccer As We Like It, the channel for football and global fans as we are in, a, in an era and summer of football. We have Euro 2024, we have Copa America starting next week, we have World Cup qualifications, we have football everywhere. The English and the European leagues are all on break as they resume in August. But let's enjoy this big tournament. Joining me today is Houston and Denver Red Army singing director Louis. How are we, mate? Oh, man, I'm blessed. How are you, sir? It's football, football, football. All this is just all the non -stop time. because football, all the after, time. after the Copa, straight into the Olympics, literally. Yep, that's right. So the Euros have started. We are in day three. Um, the, the host came out. They literally, I don't know, that anger, they literally obliterated and terminated, destroyed, de decapitated Scotland. Poor Scotland. 5-1. I, I felt bad. You know, it was 3-0 in 30, 40, 40 minutes. But 10 men, Scotland, yeah. You know, what was your take? Seeing the, the tournament so far, we've, we've, we've seen, yeah, the, no, we've I, seen I, the Germans, the host. We've I mean, seen the Germany, holders, Italy. Germany definitely had to... They definitely have to make a statement this tournament. Yes, they this have tournament. to. They have to. There's a lot of questions about the kind of the strength of the German national team, but also German development overall. I mean, they've had mm. a, a kind of a, a a struggling run since yeah, they're they knocked out badly. The United last two World Cups. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the last, you know, two World Cups, so you win in you win in 2014, 2018. Uh, did they drop out of the group, or they got one group, game? They got. They never went. From Answer group stages. Yeah, they didn't get out of the group. I mean, uh, World Cup curse, call it what you will. Euros, uh, they don't, they don't do much. They're not, you know, they're not threatening really for titles uh, overall. And as well, German players are, you know, who are who are the biggest German players? It's like right? it's like the lights just went out. Yeah, definitely. I think this was. Um, this was very similar after they they failed to qualify. I believe it was the Euros in was it two thousand? Because mm. uh, mm. they, yeah, they failed to qualify for the Euros in two thousand. They make the World Cup in two thousand two, mm. um, and since then there was kind of a um, there was there was really a call to arms in Germany, and it was really like, hey, th this this cannot be. This can't happen. They 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 really redefined what it meant to to develop German footballers, you know, mm. from, from that time on. And and I mean they did really, really well for 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 a long period of time. And they also developed a lot of coaches. A lot of great coaches were coming out of Germany. Yes. Um, you know, so you win the World Cup, you win uh was it two World Cups since then? Yeah, I believe so. Since two hundred twenty, they won, they won twice, 2014 right? in Brazil. They didn't qualify in twenty eighteen group stage. The last World Cup, they didn't even come at the group stage. Right. Ever. So you and and then of course you have the uh, you have the the Bundesliga. Is it a farmers league? Is it not a farmers league? This kind of thing. Bayern Munich always winning. Uh, Bayern Munich is the catalyst for the German national team. So you you really have to make you have to make your mark. And I think again, Scotland, first of all, Scotland didn't didn't play well. They didn't they didn't play well at all. And then of course when they go down to 10 men, it's like, yeah. all right, well. It was, like that, it, man. It was already it was 3-0 beforehand already. <laughs> they were yeah. threatening to score yeah. again. Like you yeah. knew the fourth goal was coming. Once they go down to 10, yeah. Um could they win it all? difficult it's difficult after that first game because they played really they did play extremely extremely well mm -hmm. um but again it's scotland and you know scotland, yeah so you scotland, would want to see the second they've been game playing, they've been playing better scott mctominay has gotten a couple of goals in the last couple of qualifiers things like this but it, it, it's still scotland it's still scotland mm -hmm. you know um so they they could potentially win it all. Germany, uh, England. After today, I have my doubts. Right. I have my doubts. So this is so, favorite, yes, uh, so yesterday favorite. you saw the games yesterday. You saw yes. Switzerland. Who everyone just sees Switzerland as a country that just makes cuckoo clocks and makes sweet chocolates. 
But they are a good country. They are good football. <laughs> I'm serious. They are known as the country that makes watches, cuckoo clocks, and sweet chocolate. But hey, while they, they based on football. They do yeah, well. Yeah, while they have been neutral and not fighting yeah. in wars, they've been getting better at football. Yeah. And they have they focused beat Hungary 3 1. No one it saw was that good coming. Game. It was nicely done, and they, it's one of those. It's one of those countries that a lot of people are considering a dark horse in this tournament. Yes, yeah. they could come. They could come for it. Yeah. They played. They played very, very well. And again, it's one of those games where it's like it's hungry. Mm. On paper, they seem kind of equal. Yes, so it's nice to see that they won by so many goals. But at the mm. same time, it's like how good are you? It's mm. it's kind of like an easy start. Right, right. Um, then there was Spain. Who we fought Croatia, we I, I put that game down as a draw, but the three nil first half was like, wow, well, wow, well, uh, it, it was a bit much. And they just yeah. eased they just eased off in the second half, just like you know. Now this is it. Now this is a game where you could really if you if first half, mm. I I'm thinking to myself, Spain could be a contender. Right. They could be a contender. Uh Croatia, I thought, started extremely poor. Um, Spain was on the front foot. They get the two goals back to back. Uh, it's very nice. Second half, I I thought Spain fell apart. Honestly, I thought they uh, I thought they weren't threatening anymore. Um, they it was very difficult to keep hold of possession. Uh, Luca did a little bit of work there in the midfield. Was looking was looking nice. Um, Maybe they just started bad. Maybe they didn't have their Wheaties in the morning. Uh, you know, maybe they were just a little bit here, but ill prepared. Once they settled in, though, it, it did become a little bit closer, a little bit more back and forth. So, again, kind of difficult to say because it was a tale of two halves. First half mm. was all Spain. Second half wasn't necessarily all Croatia, but Spain were were non-existent. Uh, do you do you want to say maybe they were trying to conserve energy and you know? I don't Not think so. I don't think so. You have uh, you done, have Yamal, kind of. You have Yamal, the the sixteen year old. He's trying to find his his first goal. I think Murata's trying to find a second goal. Um, no, I, I no, I they were trying. They were just they were just the execution was poor. Right, the execution right. was poor. Second half, a lot of wayward passes. They're getting you know a lot of ball, a lot of turnovers that just didn't have to happen. No, 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 no. It was not was not let's play more conservative, let's save ourselves. No, that was not the no way. I don't okay. believe it. Then the holders, Italy, who failed to qualify for the last two World Cups, uh beat Albania 2-1. Yeah, I mean Albania gave them a little fright, but uh, on paper we expected Italy to win that match as the holders coming in. They definitely and they, they, they like Germany have something to prove. Right. They they're another country that has a lot to prove off, off of, you know, their last few international tournaments, either either crashing out or early or not qualifying um, for World Cups and this kinds of things. So definitely, definitely statements had to be made. They they really, really should have won that game by more goals. Right, um, right. Final third, I thought the finishing was was uh was pretty poor overall the striker who plays for napoli i want to say it starts with an s what is his name uh did he score? i'm gonna say it wrong if i try to say it off the top of my head so i'm did, gonna did he score yesterday he did not score um it's right. gonna bug right. me if i if i i'm pulling it up right now Right. No, right. Burrell scored and Bastoni scored. Uh, Skamaka, I think is how you say that. Is that uh, what's his, what number did what jersey number did he wear? Uh, he's number nine. He uh, plays Skamaka. Skamaka. Nine, Skamaka. He's number yes. nine. Yeah. So a lot of comments, a lot of comments about him in the first half, based on his movement off of the ball. He created. Mm. He creates a lot of space mm. when he's moving. It was very, very nice to see. But then second half. To me, it seemed like his mentality was, well, if you're not going to give me the ball, if you're not trying to connect with me, then I'm not going to run anymore. He he's <laughs> he kind of got stuck in between the two Albanian center backs for mm. the majority of the second half. He, mm. you know, Scooby Doo, he was kind of lost. Right, right. Uh, or you know, just not involved in the game and and I think when that happens, I think that's why Italy don't score anymore. Right. So they have to they have to figure out a way to keep their number nine involved. 
Exactly. Um, they they got to score. They got to be more clinical in, in, in front of goal. Um, could they be a dark horse? Potentially. Maybe they could do a little something in, in the tournament. Um, I wouldn't hold my breath. Um, yeah, wish that one, wish that one kind of ended up a little bit better. Right, right. Then we have today's game, which saw England play, Netherlands play. Your favorite player, Weghorst, getting the winner. He is the fastest substitute goal winner scorer so far. Super Coming off the bench Weghorst. in two minutes, he came off of the, the bench. little like trick set piece that he's done before. He scored that goal before. Mm, mm, uh, yeah. yeah, the kind of little bounce. Uh, right, right. He's he's a, he's a clever guy. Well, Weghorst, we should sign him back at United, maybe. <laughs> Just one year. Uh, one I don't year know. Contract I don't the think the um. I don't think Ineos want that. I don't think they will take him back. I don't <laughs> think so. So, uh, you hope you saw Denmark, Everton, uh, Denmark and Slovenia. Denmark, uh, Everton scoring the goal for uh, Denmark and Slovenia. Uh, eat, yeah, oh, another right, game. Another game. I, I watched this. I watched this one in its entirety. Another game like Italy. You got to score. You got to score. Uh, Denmark completely outplayed, controlled the game, the entire game, controlled the ball. We're, we're in the attacking third most of the most of the game, and they couldn't put it away. Um, Rasmus only gets one clear chance kind of in the second half before he's pulled off, um, and it was a difficult chance. He, he couldn't score. But again, the service isn't there. And it and it kind of makes you wonder because he has a similar problem in his in his club team. Uh is that is that a move is that a mobility issue or is that a his teammates aren't trusting him? I don't know. I don't know what that is, but right, he wasn't right. really getting a lot of service there. Um but like you can't let um who was it? Not Serbia. Slovenia. Slovenia. You can't let them get back into that game. You can't let them score the the second half goal. You you have to you have to put the nail in the coffin. You have to score a second goal. Very true. Um, Very true. Uh, so they're they're in doubt now of getting out of the group because yes. they have to do something against Serbia. Yes. Uh, you know, and Serbia they, no, were not bad against England. I mean, they were not bad. They just didn't create were, enough. Serbia, Serbia was the better team. Over two two halves or over the second half? Over two halves. Hmm. Over yeah. two halves, they were the better team uh, by far. By far. I don't know. Um, and look, I, I, it is no secret. It is no secret that I do not rate Southgate. Um, right. I, I, I couldn't tell you what the plan was. I couldn't tell you what the identity was. I couldn't tell you what the style was. Um, the goal in the 13th minute. It, Bellingham's head up from Saka Cross. It's very, very good movement from Jude Bellingham um, to get the goal. Uh, you need a player like that to score goals because if you don't have a player like that, no, no one else scores that goal. It's a bad cross. It comes off of a deflection. It kind of serendipitous how it somewhat floats it's into that area right. right in front of the goal. But you have to have... You have to have someone who's hungry, who's talented, who's physical, like Jude, to come in and, and put that put that ball away. Um, because if if he doesn't score that, if he doesn't score that goal, the game ends nil nil. Um, Mitrovic had like two chances, one kind of open, one kind of under pressure that he probably should have put both away. He's a he's a good player. Mitrovic is such a good player. Um, and it was really disappointing that he doesn't score there. Um, no, he man. He have to make a great save. It, definitely. And Pickford had a few really good saves um, throughout the game. Uh, but, no, it was all it was all Serbia, man. They had the Especially ball. Especially the second half. Second half, yes. Second they, half, Southgate decided to park the bus. It looks, looks he, like he, he did. had 11 players in the defensive third behind the ball and if if you are if you are a, a favorite to win the whole thing and you're playing like that in your first game no way 
Do you think oh, maybe you... they were trying to be a bit cautious and just get the three points? I mean, people like Foden were. I, I thought I thought Foden was literally poor today. I you can't. Have a... You can't have a draw in the other game. One nil up with. Serbia having the majority of the ball, creating the majority of the chances, and say, oh, we're going to play it safe. There, no, there's no way. There's no way. You have to not – not only do you have to make three points because the other teams drew, you have to score goals. You have to score goals. You have to create a goal differential that – is it going to become a big factor at the end of the group stage? Maybe, maybe not. But why would you leave that up to chance? If you're a favorite – to win the entire thing. If you're favored to win the entire thing, no, it, it, you have to be you have to be animals. You have to be monsters, foot on the gas, you know, uh strongest possible team on the field and let's go. Like let's score goals. Let's, you know, mm. let's you know, let's show them who we are. Um and no, I I was I was not convinced. How do you okay. Poor. He did, be, he did get a header save, a great save from the keeper. Uh, yeah, one shot on goal from supposedly the greatest striker in the world. Not enough. Not enough. Um, chance creation wasn't there. He doesn't press high up top for you, so he doesn't he, win. Someone sent me something that he tends to go down quite easily. Every little contact, he's on the floor. So it like it gets a lot of fouls for England. I will, I will uh, refrain from a lot of my comments uh, that I made in the pub because <laughs> pub comments are not always <laughs> the most accurate. But after man, a few it, alcohol has gone through the system, <laughs> it was it was um, a lot of the foul calls in favor of England were very suspect. Right. Were very soft. Were very one-sided. A lot of the a lot of the contact that was happening uh on the Serbian side of the ball was not called or uh, you know what I mean? It, there was some extremely extremely suspect calls going England's way and Towards the end of the game, it, it's about if you're as a referee, it's about the tone that you set. Mm. Once you allow a, a a a few three, four, five really soft calls, then every call, especially towards the end of the game, becomes you know soft calls. There's a lot of there's a lot of diving. There's a lot of throwing themselves to the floor. Uh, Jude Bellingham, look, I think that kid is going to be one of the greatest. I think he's going to go down as one of the greatest midfielders. Um, you touch him, he was collapsing. You know what I mean? He was he was getting <laughs> in on it. Harry and that guy's what six three. It. Saka was getting in on it. Uh, Foden was getting in on it. And now, nah, man, you can't win. You cannot win the Euros like that. You can't expect the ref to save you. You can't park the bus one nil up. No nah, man, it was a very for me. It was a very poor showing from England. I think think they can turn it around. It's first game, definitely. Um, you have the talent. You have the greatest well, talent in the world. They played. They played uh, Trent Alexander in midfield. What Big did you mistake. think about that move? Big mistake. He was so unimpactful. Um, I don't know if you put him in there because you expect him to win balls. Um, but he he didn't. Really, maybe a few here or there. Nothing it doesn't stop, doesn't stop any potential goal scoring opportunities. Um, other side of the ball, they couldn't keep it. Uh, like I said, Serbia bossed the possession, especially in the second half. But even in the first half, uh, after the goal is scored, like it's all Serbia all the time. Like, uh, no. Let me see if I can find the possession stats. Yeah, I can pull uh, it up. I know they're gonna call it closer. They it they did call it close. In fact, I think they called it if, uh, before I left the pub. It, it was England was, um, England had the higher. But uh, to me, like fifty three forty seven is what I see here. Fifty three forty seven in favor of England. But I was, I mean, 
watching that game back. Yeah, it didn't look like that. It didn't look like that. There's no way. There's no way that it was that. That it was. It, no way that it was that close. But the, the, they no gave it 53, 53, 53 44, 46 on Sky Sports. On Sky Sport, 53 46. Yeah. So they yeah, gave so England, I mean, uh, England had five shots to Serbia, six. England had three on target. Serbia had one. England had one off target. Block tackles. Uh, hundred percent percentage passing completion. England had eighty nine. Serbia had eighty six. Uh, corner kicks. England had one in the one corner kick. Wow. Yeah, yeah. In they ninety had minutes. Three. But that's oh, the thing. God. They weren't. They were not threatening. They were not threatening at all. You said it was. Here, let me pull it up again. Five total shots. Two goalkeeper saves for Serbia. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, it's just it's oh no, man, it's just it's just not good. It's just not good. It's not good enough. That's not good enough to beat Germany. That's not good enough to beat France. No, to beat France, Portugal. No. No. There's no way. There's no way. I and and I would. I I would I will go back and check those stats again tomorrow. I wouldn't be surprised right. to see different numbers. So from your showing, from what you've just seen about England, if they don't improve, you don't see them winning the Euros. No, there's I mean, no. I mean they have slow they have Slovenia, they have Denmark. Which is it a hard They'll get group? out of the group. With this win, with this win they probably only need one more point to get out of the group. Exactly, which is um, how they, they will get a point against Slovenia. They will get a point against right. Denmark. Right. So, Denmark Denmark could do something, but they have to finish. If Denmark controls the game the way that they did today with their possession, their passing was fantastic. Ericsson was fantastic. And the goal he scored was world class. Tight space, cushions the ball off the chest, tucks it away with with speed. Um that was that was pre-cardiac arrest Ericsson. That mm. was phenomenal from him. Uh, what a turnaround. Um, they could do something against England, but they got to finish. Right. They got to they gotta finish their chances. England's defense. What do you think of the England defense today? Stones, um, <sighs> Walker. Who was the other guy? Um, what's his name? Let me see. Um, you had... Uh, Trippier, Walker, Stones, and Gie. Yeah. Um. Again, Mitrovic has got to score his chances because he had a few. Yes. He really, really did, and uh, so did um uh, the winger. What's his name? That guy was putting the guy, the guy who played left wing for Serbia. Yeah. He was putting in some beautiful crosses. Yeah, he was. He was playing extremely, extremely well, and and uh, no. No position. Uh, no uh uh no problems from Kyle Walker there. No. He dealt with Kyle Walker extremely, extremely yes. well. Um, but the guy was still putting in the crosses. Yeah. Uh, they man, it really, really is a game of fine margins. I think a lot of the English fans that I was around mm. um and alcohol might have had a part to play in it, but they were acting like oh. They were acting like it was like an easy win, like it was, like it was so obvious. And I was like, "This is a game of fine, fine margins." Right. Um. Because, like I said, if Jude doesn't score that one early in the game, if he's either not in that space or you have someone else in that space, it, it could easily, easily have been Serbia's game. Yeah, second half, Saka disappeared as well. Mm -hmm. So did Foden. So did Kane. Apart from that header. Uh, Alexander Arnold, mm, nothing. The one corner kick. That was, I mean, they, Connor they, Gallagher they, as they, well came yeah. in for Arnold and was abysmal. He yeah. was he was just it made no sense to me. Right, Kobe Maynard came on later on in the game. Your thoughts? Uh, came on way too late to be impactful. Mm. Yeah, it came on in the eighty. 80- fifth minute yes. 85th minute he comes on way too late to be impactful I think he should start over Trent if you're going to start him as a if you're going to start him as a fullback mm. of course Trent Alexander Arnold no question but mm. if you're going to start him in the midfield just put Kobe there 
Right. What? Why would you not? And uh, honestly, I would have started. Um, what's his name? Uh, I probably would have started Cole Palmer right. on the right instead of Saka. Mm. Uh, you know, again, like you said, like the Saka, he it's good on him to get the cross off, but it's a lucky cross. It's a deflected cross. It's mm. it wasn't clean, mm. so. Other than that one moment, it's very, very little impact. I think Cole Palmer just gives you. I think he's. I think he just gives you a, a better a bit attack. More. I think he's way more impactful. I think he's. I think he's way more dangerous for defenses um, than Saka. Maybe they thought there was going to be a a, a pace advantage. Maybe so. Maybe, or maybe so. that was the thought behind it. But as soon as as soon as you realize it's not on. Get, get Cole Palmer in there, man. And I say this as a Manchester United fan, like, Cole Palmer is, that's the one. Like, put him in there over Saka. For sure. For sure. Because the, when you're playing that 4-2, four, 4-2-3-1, two, four, two, and it's a bit tight, and you're not playing with, like, out-and-out out wingers, I, I don't understand why you don't put a, a Cole in there. It, it makes no sense to me. Either that or I, or I start him over Phil Foden, because I thought Phil Foden was very uh uh unimpactful and Cole Palmer's played on the left for Chelsea as well so maybe that makes right sense. right, right. Sense. so uh, after watching England's game today what would you give me on a scale of one to ten because you win the game maybe a six and um, Bellingham is would you say Bellingham is would you say he's the man of the man is he the new England hero can he do this by himself or is he being overhyped at this moment in time He's so good. He's so good. He's so talented. He's fit. He's young. He's hungry. He has a lot to prove. Um, so he is going to continue, I think, to have those types of performances. Um, it, there was a lot of holes in that team. There was a lot of areas where they needed to do better. Uh, center backs needed to do better. Fullbacks needed to do better. Your wingers needed to do better. Your striker, your striker is just. I use a Sofa Score. Um, it's an app that has. It's very good about getting statistics, um, from any sport: basketball, football, mm. American football, whatever mm. you watch. Um, Harry Kane is the lowest rated player, with six point eight average. Mm. Um, and to me, it's completely justified. It's completely justified. So either, uh, you know, either Jude Bellingham is in the center and finds either Foden or Saka or or whoever you play out on the wing, Palmer, whoever, and, and plays through those players, um, or you take off Kane, put Bellingham as like a false nine like he does for Real Madrid. Right. And let him run the attack. For me, I think that's your best option because if if Kane continues to play like that, man, wow, it was not good. No, it, it, was, it was. I, I good. like I said, I thought Foden and Kane this seemed a bit eh, not impactful. Foden, especially, this is supposed to be the play of the year. You know, just like in the FA Cup final, he was nullified completely by United. He seems yeah. he's still, you know, seems to run out of steam towards the and, end of the season. And you know, I I would not be surprised if um, I, you, there might be some comments about this, but I would not be surprised if City are not able to win. Uh, it's very unlikely that they're going to win the the league next year because I think what you saw this season was. Holland Holland became the focus for teams uh, because obviously he's uh, in the previous season he scored so many goals they win the they win the treble he's a golden boot teams kind of realize how one dimensional he is and again that's maybe not one dimensional maybe just two dimensional but kind but of semi predictable semi predictable they once they you stop how to the burden of getting the ball to him. But they like, and then you go towards the Champions League this year. Real Madrid, they figured it out. They figure out how to shut them down. They knock them out. Manchester United, they figure it out. They shut them down. 
Um, and then it became the title race became very, very tight towards the end of the season because teams are starting to understand how individual players in that team operate and are able to shut them down. And I think Hill Foden's the next one on the chopping block. I think, you know, people are kind of starting to really understand him more and more. Um, and of course the system, Pep system is incredible. That's why, that's why it works. Even if you do shut down a player here or there. Right, right. Um, but I think in an England squad, in a Southgate system, if you're able to shut down individual players that are supposed to be the impactful players, if you find a way to shut down Jude Bellingham, it's over. Yeah, I think it's so. Over. Um, I think so. And I and I just and I think that you know that's very very like Kyle Walker. I thought was so unimpactful. I thought he was like he just you know. A lot of people say the only thing he's got is his pace. He's not able to utilize it today at all. Doesn't really cross the ball in at all. No, he didn't. Um, you know, he's just not useful there. Um, and a lot of a lot of the attack from Serbia was up the middle, so he's just he's just not involved. Right. Um, you know. So Phil who's Foden, your smart money on? Sorry. So far, who's your smart money on after day three? Yes, that some people haven't played. Portugal haven't played yet. Uh, France I, haven't played yet. Personally, I just I chose Portugal to win it all just because I'm the fan and I'm a fan of Ronaldo and I want to see them do something more like analytically, more logistically. I thought Germany has something to prove. They played very, very well. Right. France are going to be extremely, extremely threatening. England still is the favorite for a lot of people, but just based on today. Man, they made me. Yeah, they made me question. So I would say those three: Germany, Portugal, and France. There's still Belgium to come. There's still, still Belgium to come, but I mean, honestly, Belgium hasn't really been making a mark in qualifiers either. Um, you know, uh, it, Kevin Lukaku Devonger, still leads the line for the country. Say that again. Lukaku still leads the line for Belgium, and that's and that's your problem. <laughs> and that, that really like and as much as, and i do <laughs> I, I rated lukaku for many many years but again i think he's one of those players who like like a holland he's just he's so he's gotten to the point where he's extremely predictable he's nowhere near as fast as he used to be um and he was never really fast so yeah he's you you look at uh who is he playing for roma huh? You, yes. you look at you look at like statistics for Roma, like he's not the top goal scorer in that team as their striker, is he? No. I'm pretty sure it's still uh Dybala, isn't it? Because I think he left, didn't he get loaned out from Inter to Roma? I right. think. Yeah. He, he, he is a player that you have to play with him in a very, very specific way that suits his style. Right. And if you're not doing that. Uh, ah, no nah, man, I just I just don't see it. He can't he cannot carry that team to a championship. So then you have to look at the rest of the squad. And other than Kevin De Bruyne mm. and yeah, other than that, who do you got? You know, who who can really step up and be a hero for for don't for they people? have uh uh Tillisman, he's also a good player. Yeah, not impactful enough to win a championship. Not in my eyes. Right, right. Yeah. So and as in, in England stand, they have three points. Denmark, one point. Slovenia, one point. Serbia, zero. So yeah. it is... No one scored a lot of goals. It's one goal, you know. I would like to I would like to see the Netherlands do something. Yeah. They, they can go far, that, that would be nice. Prove. Because that, again, that's another. There's so many European teams that are good, and and of course, this just goes to this. This goes to show the quality of Europe. Is there's so many teams that you would expect to do well, but when there's so many teams that do well, then someone's going to get left out. Yes. Right. So Netherlands has failed to qualify for World Cups recently. Italy have failed to qualify recently. Germany got knocked out, you know, pretty quickly. Um, so you have these teams that you expect to do well, but they potentially could not. Um, then, of course, you have the flip of that as well. It's like, you know, uh, it's a good win for, you know, for the Netherlands. Um, mm. 
could they win it all? Very, very doubtful. But if they made it towards like a round of 16 or a quarterfinal or something like this, it, it, they're they're a fun team to watch, definitely. All right. All right. Louis, thank you for joining us in our European Euro 24 roundup. You looking forward for the Copa next week? Who's your, who's Dude, your the Copa is going to be fantastic. Um, uh, you know, I got Mis Canaleros, La Marea Roja, Panama. Uh, are I think they're expected to finish like dead last. Um, but watch them, watch them do something. Watch them do something in their group. I think that I think they'll they're they're gonna surprise people. Brazil after uh, Ronaldinho's uh, criticisms, will that wake them up? What did he, what did he say? Oh, you didn't see? No. Ooh. Uh, basically, he said. Uh, I I can't pull up the whole thing right now. Right. Uh, it was kind of long, but basically, he said, uh, "I will not be supporting Brazil." Um, this team is uh, uncreative, unimaginative. There's no leaders. Uh, oh. This is one of the worst Brazil sides oh, in no. decades. Um, he came out today. Uh, there was a follow-up. Somebody had asked him about it, and he said, of course I'll be supporting Brazil. I said that to shake things up, essentially is what he said. Um, but I think there's just some... Uh, there might be some rogue uh, Brazilian journalism, some kind of mix up, but no, like there was a lot of uh, a lot of players that were angered by it. Um, but I I would hope that those players look at one of the best. Is Anthony players. the squad? Sorry, is Anthony the Brazilian squad? Oh, I don't think he's been brought back since he was originally dropped after right. the whole controversy. I don't believe so. Right. Uh, still there? They got they got Vinny in there. They got the kid that Real Madrid just signed. He's in there. Mm. Um, I can't say his name. Is, uh, is Casimiro still playing? Uh, I believe. Not retired. So I, I know Veron so. retired after the World Cup for France. I can tell you right now. I got the uh, I got the squad pulled up. But it uh, seems the hot money is on Argentina, FIFA's favorite team, FIFA's favorite son, to win the course. Copa. Yeah, no, pretty much everybody is expecting Argentina. They have the best odds. Um, uh, yeah, it's going to be very very difficult. I think what the difference with the Copa America is is that you know it basically comes down to like three or four teams. That could really, really do something. Um, you know, I would like to see the U.S. go as far as as they possibly could. The U.S. go toe to toe with uh, Argentina. They went toe to toe with Brazil, so why not? You know, uh, you know, they caught them with the draw in the uh, in the friendly. Uh, Colombia played extremely well against them, dominated them five uh, five one. Always been a huge fan of the Colombian national team. Um, yeah, they, they, they've always been a, a, a solid side. They've always they've always been a, a solid side, um, and they they could do something. But more than likely, will be a Brazil Argentina final because this is the way that it is. Um, but no, there's definitely going to be some fun matchups to watch. There's going to be some good matchups to watch. Uh, I will. I would like to see. I would like to see the U.S. beat Uruguay. Hmm. Uh, wishful thinking, I think. But um, if they can, uh, if they can get that win within their group, uh, would be massive. Would be massive right, for them right, coming right, out right. in towards. Who's the what? So it's USA, Canada, Mexico have now been integrated because it used to be and it used to be purely South American. Uh, these, these competitions have always had rules where they could invite. Uh, I remember. Yeah, the Euros, they're not inviting nobody. <laughs> well, no, because they have, they have 369 countries in Europe. You know, when you have 412 countries, you can't, you know what I mean? You can't be inviting other people over here. But, uh. Like, I remember growing up, like, in the Gold Cup in CONCACAF, like, we've invited teams from, like, we've invited South Africa before, Colombia. Is Jamaica somewhere. in the uh, Copa America? Jamaica is in the Copa America. This oh, you got to be joking, mate. The CONCACAF, the CONCACAF teams in the Copa America are Jamaica, the U.S., Canada, 
Panama, Mexico. Mexico. Is there another one? I think that might be it. I think that might be it. Um, so they've now extended the Copa America. Right. Which used to be purely South American back in the day. Right. But again, I think they've always had... They've always had an ability to invite teams if they wanted to. But now I think they, this is, I think they've opened it up more than I remember ever seeing. I don't know. Has this lost the flavor or is this, is this better or is this losing the standard of quality? I think it's, I think it's a financial aspect. Um, You know, I think it's the same, it's the same as when uh, the uh, Qatar played in the gold cup. Like you're not making the tournament better. You're not necessarily making it worse because they're not worse than all the other teams. They're, you know, they're not, they're not the best team. They're not the worst team. They fit somewhere in the mid table. Um, you know, but it's clearly, it's clearly just a financial decision. It's, it's an advertising decision. It was right before the, uh, it was right before the 2022 world cup. Um, you know, so these types of things like, Hosting hosting the Copa America in the United States, as much as I love it because it's amazing and uh you know it, it it's it's a financial decision. Like the the fans here, um, you know, they come from a lot of these Latin countries. There's a lot of Latin immigration here. Um, and you know, these people, uh, these people do well here and, and they have dollars that they can pump into, into FIFA, you know, so these guys will go where the money is. And right now the money is in the U S so yeah, add all these extra teams host the, you know, uh, Argentina is the host, but it's in the U S it, that, you know, that I mean, it, it's, it's, we, it, it, it's, does it make it better? Me, I don't know. As maybe from a television broadcasting perspective, it does. Does it make it worse? You could argue that it does because the likes of Jamaica, Panama, you know, entering the Canada. tournament and Canada. Well, I mean, yeah, Canada. They they've kind of fallen off recently. They haven't been doing all that well. <laughs> well, I mean, leading up to the twenty twenty two World Cup, they were top of the group, and then after that, man, they they're. Haven't won a Nations League. Haven't won a Gold Cup. Like I don't know what's going on in Canada, man. Like I, um, I would I will say this. I will. I am very very excited to see what Jesse Marsh does with that team. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, leaving Leeds, getting snubbed for the U.S. job, taking the Canada job. There's a lot of drama there. So and he's and I rate him. I think he's a quality. I think he's a quality right. coach. So okay. So um, we'll keep an eye on the Copa America. Um, yeah. a lot um, going on this summer, man. A lot going on this summer. Who's going to win Paris? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, that's that's another that's another football tournament we got, we got to look into as we go deeper into the Euros and into the uh, Copa America. But Louis, thank you for joining us again on another beautiful football Sunday where England have beaten Serbia in the opening match for Bear. the Euro 2024. Bear. But Bear. the hot money still is on teams like Germany, Spain, Italy, and we'll just have to wait to see. It's day three. We'll see you next week. Thank you very much, Louis. Catch up. Take care. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.